там куда There are so many things that when people think about Paris, I think they, they give it this glow. It's a beautiful city, absolutely beautiful city, but I think there is something in the challenge of her. All the art and the culture is still here, but it's also like a, a moving, like modern city. Everyone is quite literally on top of one another right next to each other, sandwich in, tiny apartments, you get used to being feeling crammed in. The first thing you notice about Paris is that it's full of paradoxes. Uh, well, of course, I mean, on the one hand, it's beautiful, and on the other hand, it's so big, it's so alienating, and it's, it, it, it was kind of shocking at the beginning. constantly aware of the fact that nobody in that country, nobody in that continent had any stake in how I ended up or what happened to me. Like I, I was very aware that everybody who loved me was so far away. When you come here and you get down to it and you actually start getting into the networks of people who actually do live here, you see that there is this sort of tradition that keeps happening and it's, and it's still here and it's because Paris calls all of these people um, and that that does create a interesting network of uh, expat, immigrant, foreign-born people who live in Paris as a, as a global metropolis. I tried and to find and take part in different communities but it still wasn't the community that I was looking for. They all had established lives and um, were very rooted. Uh, I mean, that's where they had been raised and, and were working. And, and so I think that that kind of initial need to communicate with somebody that I felt comfortable with drove me to start writing because I didn't have anybody in Paris to actually communicate in that way with. My first night at Paris Lit Up, I brought two friends. So yes, we are Paris Lit Up Open Mic. We're here every Thursday. Uh, there are various hosts who rotate. And I was hoping to show them something new and interesting and kind of unique. And when we found the flyer, we thought it would be a perfect thing to do. We showed up on time and there was nobody there. <laughs> uh, and we were worried that we had the date wrong, that maybe the flyer was out of date. Um, but it was, it seemed like a cool place. The Coup de Rapi, this, the bar that we're sitting in, um, is, you know, one of the, it's kind of sort of identified as one of the original places where French slams sort of took root. They host so many different events and it means that the management know what to expect. It means that the people who come to Coup de Rapide know that that's what it's famous for, so they're not surprised when they see something going on. When you have a place like this that has that kind of history, you, f you do feel that, you know, it, it, it comes off the tables and the, and, the, and, the, and, and the people who just normally come here, um, it's part of the vibe, it's part of the, the atmosphere. For us it was important to have a space that had that sort of community spirit like inside its walls. Eventually it did start. <laughs> a bit late and I knew the first night that I went that I had found something important. Thank you everyone for Paris Lit Up, like this is awesome to be back and you guys were very instrumental in us being able to do any of this so we're really thankful. There's a good, very very good community that those two nights create. There aren't really any barriers and that's, that's appealing to anybody coming into a new place to, to fit seamlessly. And the people you meet 
come from all over the world and have so many wonderful stories to tell and I mean there were a lot of different reasons why people performed some had had things they had to get off their chest so I have some breakup poetry for you <laughs> um, some just wanted to share their thoughts and musings and my father gave to me this book of poetry it's, it's something that happens every day to, I think, everyone who comes to Paris Lit Up. You can sort of feel that openness. It's like, yeah, I'm here to see you, to see who you are, to see what you do, and to, sh and to share myself too, you know? So like, I participate in that, and in Paris, that's not that. Uh, that doesn't happen all that often. I think it's something not rare, but you need to find it. That kind of embrace of each individual for what they had to offer was really special. They're incredibly enthusiastic. Jason, Kate and Emily, they've got such innate desire to, to create this space for people to read, um, for people to meet each other. I remember when I first started going and suddenly I, I had found this group of people who, who were there to just share beauty with each other. So I, it, it was so, it is, it still is so warm that that, I mean, I couldn't stop going. I've been going ever since. Most of the people from Paris Lit Up probably don't even realize the effect that it had on me while I was there. Um, but suddenly that's what I was excited to do. It's a group of people who don't necessarily have established lives. We're all kind of nomads, like coming through temporarily. and. And searching for this community, and I mean, it's that community is constantly changing. Uh, I'm sure that if I went back now, I probably won't recognize most of the people there. But that's kind of the beauty of it: is that it's constantly changing, and kind of yet still offers the same kind of solace to each person. We have comes a through. huge list of people actually to start the night. So if I don't get around to your name, uh, we will have a second round, so you will read it if you want to persevere and keep drinking beer, and then you will have the right to poetry. I guess that, I mean, we all need to go where life leads us, and what I've been repeating to myself for months, actually a year now, is <laughs> the last line of a letter that John Steinbeck wrote to his son, <laughs> it was actually a letter of advice on love, and I read this at Paris Sit Up at some point. Um, and he says, uh, you don't need to hurry anything because nothing good gets away. I think that in Paris I found things that are so good that I know they'll never get away.